Welcome to Review Central. This is USTET reviewer number 4, featuring questions for the USTET mathematics proficiency subtest. This reviewer is intended for those who are eyeing, or are set to take, the USD entrance test or USTET. There are 10 questions featured on this reviewer. All questions are modeled on actual questions that appeared on previous USTETs. Before we proceed, don't forget to subscribe to Review Central and click or press the bell button to make sure you get notified whenever we post a new reviewer or other review materials on this channel. Now let's begin. Question number 1. Solve for x in the equation 2 raised to 3x times 3 raised to x equals 576. A minus 2. B minus 1. C 1. D 2. E 3. The correct answer is D 2. This problem involves exponential and logarithmic expressions and equations. Let's give you a review central pro tip in solving math questions involving exponential problems. When solving for x, or any variable for that matter, where x is the exponent or is in the exponent, check to find out if the other terms in the equation can be expressed as exponential terms with common bases. Let's illustrate this with a simple example. Solve for x and 2 raised to x equals 8. For the solution, check if 8 can be expressed as an exponential term with base 2. It is. Therefore, 2 raised to x equals 2 raised to 3. The common bases can then cancel out. And we're left with x equals 3. Easy, right? Now let's solve the given problem. Step 1, express 576 as 64 times 9. Step 2, express 64 as 2 raised to 6, and 9 as 3 raised to 2. Both sides now have common bases. Equate terms with common bases. 3 raised to x equals 3 raised to 2. Therefore, x equals 2. 2 raised to 3x equals 2 raised to 6. Therefore, 3x equals 6 and x equals 2. Question number 2. What is the solution set of the given inequality? The correct answer is C. This is a problem involving quadratic and rational inequalities. Let's attempt to simplify the given inequality. First, we can factor out x from the denominator. Next, we add the two fractions to the left of the inequality using x times quantity x minus 1 as the least common denominator. Next, simplifying the numerator, we should arrive at x squared plus 4x. We can factor out x from the numerator. We can cancel out x from both numerator and denominator, and end up with x plus 4 over x minus 1 is greater than or equal to 0. Now, recall from your algebra how to express inequalities using interval notations. The main concept to remember is that parentheses represent solutions greater or less than the number, and brackets represent solutions that are greater than or equal to or less than or equal to the number. Use parentheses to represent infinity or negative infinity, since positive and negative infinity are not numbers in the usual sense of the word and, therefore, cannot be equal. For our final answer we should arrive at the solution set in option C. Question number 3. A geometric sequence's first term is logarithm base 3 of 64, and its common ratio is logarithm base 3 of x. Find the value of x for which the sum to infinity of the geometric sequence is 3. a. 1 fourth b. 2 thirds c. 3 fourths d. 4 thirds e. 4 The correct answer is c. 3 fourths. This is a problem involving a combination of logarithmic expressions, and sum of a geometric sequence. Recall your formula for the sum to infinity of a geometric sequence. Sum to infinity is equal to the first term, a1, over 1 minus the common ratio, r. Where? The sum to infinity is given as 3. The first term is given as logarithm base 3 of 64. And, the common ratio is given as logarithm base 3 of x. 
Let's plug in the given values to our formula. Using basic algebra, at some point we should arrive at the equation, logarithm base 3 of 64, plus logarithm base 3 of x cubed, is equal to 3. Recalling our logarithmic identities, we know that adding two logarithmic terms with the same base can be expressed as a product. Therefore, our equation now reads, logarithm base 3 of the product of 64 and x cubed is equal to 3. Again, recall from our logarithmic identities that we can cancel out the logarithm of a term by raising it to an exponent equal to its logarithmic base. Therefore, if we raise both sides of the equation to the power of 3, we'll end up with 64 times x cubed is equal to 3 cubed. From here we can now proceed to solve for x. We should arrive at 3 fourths as the value of x. Question number 4. A precious stone worth 270,000 pesos accidentally fell and broke into 3 pieces. The weight of the 3 pieces are in the ratio 3 is to 5 is to 7. The value of the stone varies directly to the cube of its weight. Find the loss in the value caused by the breakage. A. 8,181.75 pesos B. 39,600 pesos C. 210,000 pesos D. 230,400 pesos E. 261,818.25 pesos The correct answer is D. 230,400 pesos Let X be the weight of the stone since the weights of the three broken pieces are in the ratio 3 is to 5 is to 7, we can then express the total weight, W, as 3x plus 5x plus 7x is equal to 15x. The value of the stone varies directly to the cube of its weight. We can therefore express the value of the whole stone, P whole, as equal to K times W cubed, where K is the value of the stone per unit of weight. Let's label this as equation 1. The value of the whole stone is given as 270,000 pesos and we have expressed the total weight as 15x. Let's plug in these values to equation 1. We'll arrive at k times x cubed is equal to 80. Let's label this as equation 2. For the broken pieces, we can express their total value, p3 pieces, as k times 3x cubed, plus k times 5x cubed, plus k times 7x cubed. Expanding the cubes, we arrive at this equation, from which we can proceed to factor out kx cubed. Next, we can replace the value of kx cubed from equation 2 and arrive at 39,600 as the total value of the broken pieces. We can now compute for the loss in value caused by the breakage by subtracting the total value of the three broken pieces from the value of the whole stone. The loss in value is equal to 230,400 pesos. Question number 5. Which of the following is a factor of x raised to 4, minus 3x raised to 3, plus 2x raised to 2, minus 11x plus 15? A. x minus 2. B. x plus 3. C. x plus 2. D. x minus 3. E. x plus 1. The correct answer is D. x minus 3. Recall from your algebra that a zero of a function is an input value that produces an output of zero. In other words, a root of a polynomial is a zero of the corresponding polynomial function. Now let's inspect and evaluate each of the given answer choices and determine which one of them, if any, is a factor of the polynomial, x raised to 4, minus 3x raised to 3, plus 2x raised to 2, minus 11x plus 15. Let's start with answer choice A, x minus 2, or x equals 2. Replacing all instances of x in the equation with 2, we'll arrive at minus 7, not 0. Therefore, x minus 2 is not a factor. Next, x plus 3, or x equals minus 3. This will result to 228, not 0. Therefore, x plus 3 is also not a factor. Next, x plus 2, or x equals minus 2. This will result to 85, not 0. So x plus 2 is likewise not a factor. Moving on to answer choice D, x minus 3, or x equals 3. This results to 0. x minus 3 is a factor. 
for the last answer choice E, X plus 1, or X equals minus 1. The result is 32 not 0. Therefore, X plus 1 is not a factor. From among the answer choices, only D, X minus 3, is a factor. Question number 6. If a car runs at an average speed of 50 km per hour with some regular intervals, and takes 4 hours to run a distance of 80 km, what time will it take to run at an average speed of 70 km per hour with the same intervals, to run 140 km? A. 4 hours B. 4.5 hours C. 5 hours D. 5.5 hours E. 6 hours The correct answer is C, 5 hours. Do you recall your speed formula in your physics class? Speed, or velocity, equals distance over time. From this formula, we can find the distance given the speed and time, to be. Distance equals speed times time. Now, let D1 to be the original distance, given as 80 kilometers. D2 to be the new distance, given as 140 kilometers. S1 is the original speed. This is given as 50 km per hour. S2 is the new speed. This is given as 70 km per hour. T1 is the original time of 4 hours. T2 is the new time. This is unknown, and is what we are looking for. By ratio and proportion, D1 over T1 S1, equals D2 over T2 S2. Plugging in all the available values, we should be able to compute for T2 and arrive at 5 hours. Question number 7. Which of the following best describes the relationship between the equations, 2x plus 3 times the quantity y minus 1, equals x plus 5, and, 1 sixth x, plus 1 half y, equals 4 thirds? A. Parallel B. Coinciding C. Intersecting D. Perpendicular E. Cannot be determined The correct answer is B. Coinciding Let's try to simplify the first given equation. We should arrive at the equation, x plus 3y equals 8. Let's label this as equation 1. Let's also try to simplify the second given equation. We should arrive at the equation, x plus 3y equals 8. Let's label this as equation 2. Surely, by now you've already realized that equations 1 and 2 are actually identical. But what does that mean? Coinciding lines, also known as coincident lines, are lines that lie upon each other in such a way that when we look at them, they appear to be a single line, instead of double or multiple lines. They have not only the same slopes and the same intercepts. They have infinitely many points in common. Question number 8. The daily profit, P, of a certain oil refinery in Bataan is given by P equals 24x minus 0.06x squared, where x is the number of barrels of oil refined. How many barrels of oil will give maximum profit? A. 200 barrels B. 600 barrels C. 800 barrels D. 1200 barrels E. 2400 barrels The correct answer is A, 200 barrels. Let's rewrite the given equation, P equals 24x minus 0.06x squared as, P equals minus 0.06x squared plus 24x, to follow the standard form, Y equals x squared plus Bx plus C. From here we can determine that A equals minus 0.06, B equals 24, and C equals 0. If you recall from your geometry, the given equation is actually that of a parabola. Since we are looking for the maximum profit, we need to find the highest point of the parabola. Again, recall from your geometry that the highest, or lowest, point in a parabola is called the vertex and we can find it by using the formula, h equals minus the quantity b over 2a. Plugging in the values of b and a, we'll arrive at 200 barrels as the answer. How can you be sure that indeed, 200 barrels of oil will give the oil refinery maximum profit? 
One quick way to do it is to plot the x value on a table and compare it with lower and higher values of x. We made such a table for you as follows. On this table we compared the resulting profits from 198, 199, 200, 201, and 202 barrels of oil. As you can see, indeed, 200 barrels resulted in maximum profit. Question number 9. The 5th and 10th terms of an arithmetic sequence are 53 and 23, respectively. Find the first term of the sequence. A. 75 B. 76 C. 77 D. 78 E. 79 The correct answer is C. 77 Recall your formula for arithmetic sequence. A n equals a 1 plus the quantity n minus 1 times d. Where? A n is the the nth term of the arithmetic sequence. A1 is the first term of the arithmetic sequence, and d is the common difference between terms. Take note that this can also be expressed as the general formula. A n equals a m plus the quantity n minus m times d. Where? m is the nth term of the arithmetic sequence, and where m must always be less than n. Going back to our problem. The following values are given, a5 equals 53, and a10 equals 23. A1 is unknown. Using our general formula for an arithmetic sequence, in which n equals 10 and m equals 5. We can compute for the common difference d is minus 6. Now let's compute for a1. A10 is equal to A1, plus the quantity 10 minus 1, times minus 6. We should arrive at A1 equals 77. We can also use A5 instead of A10 with the same result. Question number 10. Find the equation of the line that passes through the point, minus 3, minus 5, with slope of minus 5 over 7. a. 5x plus 7y plus 50 equals 0. b. 5x plus 7y minus 50 equals 0. c. 5x minus 7y plus 20 equals 0. d. 5x minus 7y minus 20 equals 0. e. 7x plus 5y plus 46 equals 0. The correct answer is a. 5x plus 7y plus 50 equals 0. Recall your point slope formula. y minus y1 is equal to m times the quantity x minus x1. Where, y1 is the y coordinate of point 1, which is given as minus 5. y is the unknown y coordinate of a second point. m is the slope of a line, which is given as minus 5 over 7. x1 is the x coordinate of point 1, which is given as minus 3 x is the unknown x-coordinate of a second point. Plugging in the given values into the point-slope formula. We can proceed to simplify and normalize the resulting equation. We should arrive at 5x plus 7y plus 50 equals 0, which is answer choice A. You have just completed USTET Reviewer number 4, which featured questions for the USTET Mathematics Proficiency Subtest. If you wish to watch more USTET Reviewers for the USTET Mathematics Proficiency Subtest, check out our USTET Mathematics Proficiency Reviewers playlist. Check out also our other USTET playlists for other reviewer topics. If you haven't done so yet, please don't forget to subscribe to Review Central and click or press the bell button to make sure you get notified whenever we post a new reviewer or other review materials on this channel. Please like if you find this video useful, and feel free to share it to anyone who may also benefit from it. We wish you all the best on your forthcoming Ustet, and we look forward to your exciting days as a Tunisian. Go Ustet!